Hello. Welcome to this week's episode of the Expand and Evolve podcast. That's so funny that I just said it like that, but I was just recording another episode. I'm super nasally and congested, so I apologize. Um, But when I went to check my Instagram after I was done, a ton of you were saying that you wanted to hear about the business and financial piece, which I didn't end up talking much about because I figured I could make it a separate episode. But lately, people haven't been super into that. So Now that you guys are, I'm like, okay, great. Let's talk about this. So this is going to be some of my key takeaways about the um, business piece of it. And honestly, like what I want to first start by saying is that when you fix yourself, you will fix money. So just make this your little phrase for yourself. Like when I fix money, I fix me. Or when I fix me, I fix money. However you want to say that. But ultimately, this is what I've realized through going to the Awakens, being in the mastermind, and my own life is that they're not separate. Like, I feel like if you guys have even listened to the intro of my podcast or the trailer, like my first massive lesson was around my health. And then my second massive lesson in life was around business and money. And now my biggest lessons are are relationships. And I feel like that's what I'm kind of learning to master and understand. Um, And each one is linked to each other. So it's like when my relationship was all crazy and, and things were going all insane. Like it was impacting my money and it was impacting my health. When I'm taking care of my health really well, my business is usually doing really well. My relationships are really doing, usually doing really well. So I just want to say like, they're all connected. And if one area of your life is a mess, it's probably going to impact others. And this is where it's so important to realize that if you are struggling with money, I doubt that there's nothing else going on in your life that you're not, that you're struggling with. Like there's, it's really rare that people have a hundred percent happiness and peace and amazing relationships and amazing health and amazing everything. And then their money is a mess. Like usually that's not the case. Like usually if your health is on point, your relationships are on point, your business is going to be on point and money is going to be good. And money is relative in terms of like what is good to you versus what might be good to somebody else. But that part doesn't really matter. Um, I was just going to talk through a couple different things that were key points and honestly, just mapping out your the life that you want to be living. Like I think that is number one and like something that I think so many people don't think about is you need to map out like what do you actually want? Because I I know even for me, like I can get in this place of, okay, I need to earn more money. Okay, but for what? Like what is this more money paying for? What is this more money changing in my life? What, What do you want more money for? So it's getting clear on like, okay, is it because you don't feel like you have enough downtime or you don't have enough in your savings or you want to be able to take more vacations or you want to be like me and start a school and have a bunch of anchorage, like whatever your thing is, right? It's just getting crystal clear. And I think this is a step that so many people miss. They just go, I need to make more money. What is the more money giving you? And how much is more money? Because you could be fully happy, content, living your dream life with $500 more it doesn't need to be so stressful. It's only 500 bucks. Or you could be in a position where you're like, holy shit, I need to like quadruple my income to live the life that I really want to live. And even getting that down on paper and understanding what you actually need to live your dream life can give you some level of peace, especially when you give yourself time to do it. So it's not like, okay, my dream life looks like this and I'm making, I need to make this much money a month. And there's no way I can do that right now. So I just can't do it. It's like, no, give yourself three to five years. And how much better does it feel if you give yourself three to five years to accomplish that thing? So um, we did an exercise where basically you had to look at, if you want to get a pen and paper, where we split it into four quadrants. So like one, two, three, four, like four boxes with some space in between. And you basically want to look at your life today. Like what are your current expenses and what are they costing you monthly? to live the life you're currently living. And then in three years from now, for example, like what would you like your life to look like? So you would basically do it. um, If you're watching the video, you'll see this, but four quadrants, this is where I'm saying, like, I don't really know what happened here. Uh, I don't don't even know all of them. Um, Anyways, so if you're looking at this, it's kind of looking at, so you would give an example of like what your life is like today, how much is it costing you? And then what you want your life to look like three years from now. So those same expenses, for example, or whatever you want your life to look like. And then you could work it out to be like, um, what, okay. So I had written here just like the way I was going to do it. And then, so the income that you'd want to be making per month, how much time you'd actually want to be working, um, 
if you'd be going on vacation. So like how many vacations a year do you want to go on? Do you want to go on four vacations, five vacations, those types of things, just like trying to get clear on like what you want that to look like and then actually breaking down the money you need. So if right now the way you're living, let's say you like your house, you like your car, you like where you're going, you just wish you could vacation four times a year. Okay. You're going to work out what would it cost to vacation to where I want to go four times a year? How much more money do I actually need? Maybe it's like $15,000. You're like, oh my God, I only need to learn how to make $15,000 more per year. Okay. Now you can work backwards and be like, how am I going to make that $15,000 a year? Does this make sense? So starting to break that down. Um, And then another thing that he went over was just like, where did you learn that working hard equals money? And I love this because same thing. Like if you work more hours, you're going to be more successful. Think of every movie you watch. Everyone that's successful is always working a lot. Every single one, any successful person is like, I just watched one. And they're like, I just wish she could be more present. She's always working. Um, and anyway, so he just said like who, and who taught you to put in 40 to 60 hours a week to make money. It's a good reflection point. Um, also where did you learn not to travel? Where did you learn not to vacation? Where did you learn not to see new things? And he also said, if you're not traveling, what are you, what are you working for? And I just went, oof, because I used to think I didn't care about traveling, but it's like, where did I learn that? Did, was that actually a belief I had or was it something I learned because I figured it's not something working people do and it's not something that's realistic. So don't get your hopes up because most people can't travel. Um, so just questioning, like where where are your beliefs really from? Are they yours? Are they something that you saw your parents or other people um, have? And so you decided to believe that. And not to mention like that's creating from the energy of survival. So the, the universe doesn't care how many zeros. Only thing that it cares about is you. So only person that cares about that is you. So you get to decide like how much money do you make? What do you want to do? But it has to be something that you also can kind of see as realistic or feasible. And the goal doesn't need to be realistic, but it can't be so outlandish that you just decide that there's no way that you could ever have that. Um, So just getting clear, like how much money do you actually want to make? And he had said like, your wish is my command basically because it's you, like you get to decide that and that you cannot have both. So you can have a work style or a lifestyle, but you can't have both. And so that's exactly what you see in so many of these movies where these CEOs and these busy people They have a work style, right? Like they're working all the time. Their entire life revolves around work versus making work fit into your life. And this is something that I'm really fortunate to have been able to do with the business that I'm in, where I've been able to fit it into my life and I'm able to do all the life things, but it doesn't take over my life. It's not like I'm doing it 24 seven or on 24 seven. It's like whenever you're an entrepreneur, I think it's normal to have thoughts and your mind go 24 seven. Um, but you don't have to be showing up 24 seven. And that's the beauty of building a business is where you can start to honestly shrink down your hours, hire more people, have other people helping you. And then you shrink your hours down to the point where you're only working like 10 to 20 hours a week. Like that's the ideal is that you work 10 to 20 hours a week. You hire out people to help you do other things and you are able to increase your income and your money while you're doing less. Like that's the goal is to be able to build a business that allows you more time freedom but continues to keep growing um, based on the less hours you put in. And this is something that I feel is so valuable if you do dive into your own healing or like breath work, meditation, all these things is those two activities of meditation and breath work allow you to drop in and clear out all the noise. And for me, what I have found from doing those two things is it gives me crystal clear vision of where I want to go, what my trajectory is. Um, what my mission is, what the values are that I want to, the things that I want to create, it narrows it down. And then when I'm able to go sit down and say, right now I have an hour to work, um, execute the things that actually matter instead of doing a bunch of stuff that doesn't, and that isn't helpful or isn't useful. And this is something that's so awesome about like carving out more time is that you're able to get crystal clear. with like, okay, what's the vision? What's the mission? Where am I going toward? And you just take actions that align with that. And you're able to like drop all the other stuff that doesn't actually matter. But when you're constantly in your mind and you're busy 24 seven, you're trying to do all these things where so many of those things you're doing don't really yield a reward at all. So it's like you're keeping yourself busy and you're doing a bunch of shit, but like you could drop a lot of that and have more 
impact doing less with the things that make the most impact. Does this make sense? So it's like for me right now, here's just an example. Like I'm going in on spending a lot of time recording for the podcast, making clips, sharing on social media. It's helping me reach so many new people. I'm doing something one time. I'm recording a podcast. I'm taking clips from my podcast. I'm sharing them on social. A bunch of them have gone viral. So I'm going to continue to keep doing that because I'm like, obviously I'm learning. My superpower is speaking and my voice. So I'm leaning into that. I didn't know this four years ago. I just was trying to figure it all out. So be willing if you don't already have a thriving, successful business to just dive into something and then build it, master it. And then if you decide you want to move on to something else, go for it. But learn how to start mastering the basic skills of business before you jump into 900 different things. And I think sometimes people do that because you probably have a deep-rooted fear of success or you have commitment issues. I don't really know. I don't, for me, logically, that doesn't make sense. Like I'm not one to jump in and try to do 10 businesses at once because my brain couldn't handle that. Other people are great at that. But for me, I would rather take one thing, master it, take the next thing, master it, instead of trying to do a bunch of different stuff half-assed that I'm not doing very well. So if you're that person right now where you're doing a ton of different things and you haven't mastered any of them, go in, meditate, journal. I don't care what you do, but figure out one to two things that you're going to put your effort and focus into right now and drop the rest because it's taking up way too much of your energy and time from the areas of your life that you could be mastering. But instead you're just keeping yourself busy with stuff that's not really going anywhere. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, getting crystal clear, like what kind of lifestyle do you actually want to live? Uh, carving it out where you imagine yourself not working more than 20 hours a week. And, Another question he just said was like, how many people do you actually know working less than 20 hours a week with financial freedom? Probably like nobody, right? Like you probably don't know very many people like that. Um, But for me now, because I'm surrounding myself with these types of people and I'm in these programs with people, I'm meeting people and this is real life. Like really, really successful people who have figured out how to master this and are working way less, tons of free time and their income is growing. So that whole belief that like you need to work harder um, and work all the time and do 40 to 60 hours, 80 hours, 100 hours a week to bring in money. No, you're being a slave to the system. You need to like pull back, give yourself more time and figure out how you're not going to live your life like that anymore because you're worth so much more than that. Like any of you, if you were listening to this and you were doing crazy hours like that, you need to figure out a way to do it differently. And maybe that means hiring people because there's something that he's told me is like anything somebody else could do, you need to stop doing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's really hard when you're kind of a control freak and you feel like you want to do it all. But I've realized like, okay, sending cards, for example, I always liked that it was me doing it and it was personal. And I'm like, okay, but I can have someone else help me do that. Yes. Somebody else is very much capable of doing that. Is somebody else capable of sending a monthly email? Yes. I'm still doing it. But like, you know what I mean? Like there's certain things I have an assistant who has taken over certain tasks, like sending out my gifting. I used to love doing it myself because it was like, oh, I'm sending them a gift. Now I'm like, but do I need to do that or someone else capable of doing it? Okay, great. Delegate. An assistant is now handling my gifting for my team. So different little things that you can be like, anything that somebody else could do, nobody else could use my mouth and speak. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm hiring assistants to help with the rest. So it's like figuring out anything else somebody else could do that you don't have to be doing as you hire somebody, delegate, delegate, delegate. And for those of you in business, you need to learn that. And a lot of the time it could be money because it's like, obviously that costs me money. Oh, me doing it myself. I could have more money. Yeah. But I also wouldn't have time. I couldn't get it all done. So be willing to spend your money on other people. I promise you when you, when you are willing to, um, invest in yourself through like, whether it's programs, like going to awaken, for example, cost money worth it. You are going to get that plus more back investing in a mentoring program or coaching program, investing in starting a business, like investing in using your money to do things that better you. I promise you, you will always get that money back. And honestly, most of the time tenfold, like if you go all in on these things, you're going to end up having more money come into your life. You're going to have more abundance. You're going to be more blessed because you're willing to invest in you. And that's the most important thing where you could spend your money. But that's the most important thing. So be willing to do that. Um, Okay, next thing. He was like, what's the best way to never earn any more money? Do you want to know what it is? Ask how much something costs. And I was like, I love it because for me, 
like when you're like, ooh, how much is it? Ooh, I don't know. Like think of how I get it, okay? Like there's been lots of seasons in my life where you have to be mindful of the spending. But when you constantly are thinking about how much something costs, like that is such scarcity and like low vibrational energy. If there's something that calls to you, let's say it's like the organic bananas. Don't look at the freaking cost. Just buy the organic bananas, um, which by the way, I would spend my money on like organic strawberries over organic bananas. But anyways, um, so just figuring out like where, like let's say for Awaken, you're like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. I need to go. But you look at the cost. You're like, oh, I don't know if I can. Like F that. Stop doing that. If you're, if you follow me and you see that we're doing a retreat, for example, like if you see that I'm doing a retreat and you're like, oh, but I don't know. Is it worth it? Like is it worth it to spend three days or two days, however long it is with people who are leveling up their life, investing their time and energy into themselves, who are doing the breath work and the healing work and are bettering themselves? Like, are you worth it? Like, do you think you're worth it to spend money on or not? Because that's something that you might need to work on is realizing like, holy shit, I don't even think I'm worth spending money on. Where did this belief come from? Because of course you're worth spending money on. But where did you get that belief? that like spending money on bettering yourself isn't worth it or isn't valuable. That is the most valuable thing. It's more valuable than clothing. It's more valuable than your restaurant. It's more valuable than some new purse. It's more valuable than, I don't even know what other people spend money on because I'm like, all I do is spend money on pretty much investing in myself. I buy my kids toys. I buy a lot of food. I have been shopping a little bit lately, but like normally I don't do that. So just think of like a new pillow, your new bedding, I don't know, a new lamp, like those things are great, but bettering yourself and investing in, in you is more important than any of that stuff. Like hands down, way, way, way more important. I just realized I'm leaning to the side. And if I try to clip any of this, I'm not going to be in the video. So cool. Um, <clears throat> anyways. Okay. So do, 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 do. Yeah. Why would you be blessed with more money when you're constantly worried about money? Isn't that so good? Maybe that doesn't make sense to you guys, but you have to start seeing it as like, why would you be blessed with more when you're like content with how things are? If you're constantly worried about money, like, okay, how does this make sense? (sighs) Concerned. Okay. Okay. So why would you be blessed with more money when you're concerned about money? So living in that like concerned energy around money, right? Again, universe, whatever you believe in, energetic frequency wise, like doesn't know, like it's just seeing like money causes concern. We don't want more of that versus realizing like, no, if you have abundance and you have more money, like you'll keep getting blessed with more because it's not causing frustration to your life. Um, so committing to never purchasing based on cost. Uh, yeah. And then again, like how, when you say something's a lot, like this is what I had to do in my life was I had to spend the money on the thing that I was like, okay, this is kind of a lot of money. Like investing in the coaching program I'm in was the most money I'd ever spent um, as a monthly fee to be in a coaching program. But I had to go, okay, am I going to not choose it because it costs money? Or am I going to sit here right now and make the declaration that like I'm choosing myself and I'm investing in myself and I know by making this, taking this action and taking this step, more money is going to come to me because I was willing to bet on myself. And that's what happened. So in the position I was when I chose to make that choice, it was a lot of money. But I realized I was like, if I do this, I know more money is going to come to me. It always does. And so I chose to invest in the program and more money has come to me. It's just how it works. Like when you're willing to bet on yourself and invest in yourself, you will always have money come to you. Another example of this, my friend the other day, I don't know what we had, what she had purchased. Um, anyways, we were doing something and she was like, Oh, I don't know. It's kind of a lot of money. She was like, you know what? F that. I'm not going to use that energy. She bought it anyway. Guess what happens? A new, um, client came in or like a new, I don't know. She ended up having money drop into her bank account. Like when you're willing to invest and not go from, not choose things out of an energy of scarcity, but instead out of abundance, you will always be blessed with more. You just have to learn to do that. And it can be scary, but I promise you it works. Um, So just, you have to just trust it, figure it out. And I promise the money will come from somewhere. And, um, okay. Creating life for your dreams, money's abundance. Yeah. So also realizing like, if you do have a business, um, realizing that like money is just an exchange for value or for abundance. So it's like, if you're doing something 
work-wise that's improving someone's life and it's giving your energy and your time, you have to be, especially if you charge hourly, like what are you worth? Like an access to an hour of your time, like what are you worth? I've had to think about this. People are asking me for um, one-on-one calls and I'm just kind of like, okay, I could do this, but then it's also figuring out like, what am I going to do? I don't know. I'm like navigating this whole new thing. And it's like, but what are you going to charge for that? Because I'm like an hour of time is like sacred, right? So just getting clear on like, what do you feel you're worth? Um, and being willing to like improve or or increase pricing if you need to. So, okay. Um, another thing he kind of mentioned was like, if you sit in your comfort zone for too long, it won't give you a magical life. So if you're currently sitting in your comfort zone and there's nothing that you're doing that's helping you learn or expand or grow or dive into something that's like deep within you that you know really matters to you, um, like you're not going to live the most magical life you could. And another thing he said was that, that your business right now is a reflection of your heart and your soul. So what I wanted to end with was just this little chart. Okay. I'm going to explain it. So just imagine there's little circles. Okay. If you're not seeing this, it basically is one circle in the middle, which is your soul. And then outside of your soul is your heart. Outside of your heart is your mind. And then outside of that is your body. Okay. So your body encompasses your soul, heart, and your mind are all within your physical body. Okay. And basically what he explained is like your body is just an outward representation of what's happening on, sorry, trying to record sick still. Your body is just an outward representation of what's happening on the inside. So if you have a beautiful, loving, healthy relationship with your body, right? And if you have a beautiful, loving relationship with your heart and your soul and your mind, you're probably going to have a beautiful external appearance of your body. Where if that shit is a mess, Another thing that I started noticing, and I've talked about in this recent episode, was, oh, we did this beautiful exercise with the men while we were there. First of all, I didn't even talk about this in the episode about Awaken. Um, We did this circle where anyone who had been a victim of sexual abuse had to stand up. And we all stood in a circle with blindfolds on. And then the men came in the room and knelt down to our feet to honor us. And we had blindfolds on, so we didn't know the men were there. But as the man laid down, came to our knee, like knelt down at our feet, I had this urge to get down there too. And I didn't even know that a guy was coming to do this. And so when we took our blindfolds off, we were able to basically, if we felt comfortable, um, allow this man to embrace us and be there for us and like hug us and hold space for us and forgive basically. And it was the most beautiful exercise, the most draining emotionally exercise too. But you guys, out of a room of a thousand people, let's say there's 600 women, there may have been 20 women on each side of the circle who hadn't been sexually abused, didn't have a uh, memory of sexual abuse or something, sexual trauma, basically. Um... And out of most of those women, I guarantee you, after that circle was done, they realized there was something in them that had been abused too. And some of the girls I was with actually had that realization that they they weren't going to go in the circle and something said, you're supposed to be in this circle. Anyways, I digress. What I wanted to get at is then we had to go and the men got to sit in circle and all of us as women had to go up to them and either like give them physical touch they were all blindfolded or say words of affirmation in their ear. And this was so powerful. And I'm going to get back to the money thing in a second, but I want to share this because this encompasses what I was going to say. There was this one man who let me just like rock him. Okay. And I was like rocking him almost like a baby. He was old, like an older man, like maybe 60. And I'm just like rocking him like a baby. And this was interesting too. complete strangers, you guys but you could feel. And if you let yourself really drop in, this is your feminine too. When you drop into your body, you're able to just feel what another human being needs. And by me just having my hands on him, I was able to start being like, he wants to be rocked, like getting rocked is his comfort. And it made me just realize like, oh my God, all these men, they were just little baby boys, just like my baby boys. And they need all the same stuff. And it gave me this realization that like, 
the amount of men who, when they heard, I'm proud of you. I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you. were bawling, like hyperventilating bawling, you guys. It showed me how many men are needing that love. They are needing it so desperately. Not only like a woman's physical touch, that was great, but the words in their ear telling them that like, I'm proud of you. I'm grateful for you. I appreciate you. I love you. You're strong. Like these men were bawling their eyes out. And it just made me realize how many men are like, there's so much I think right now about women, but there's not a lot that you hear about what men need. Like even in the masculine feminine dynamic, it's like, I need a man to be the provider and do all this. It's like, what does a man need? Men need us to show up for them too. And they need love. Like, I feel like the only way I can describe it is how many of these men felt starved of love. And the reason I'm even bringing this up is because the body being the mind, heart, and the soul, and the stories I heard from a lot of people with really big bellies was sadness. And if you can think about it, obviously I'm on video right now, but think of the person with the really big belly, okay? It keeps growing and it's going out and out and out. What is that doing? It's creating an outward bubble and boundary and separation from other people. It's like protecting your heart and your soul and all these things that are like in here, like flat. When you have all this extra space on your body, it's creating this like boundary from you and these other people. And all I could think, because so many men have these bellies as I'm like, oh my God, like they're sad. I don't know why I'm like linking big belly to sadness, but I think it's this internal sadness. And so the reason that this ties to money, you guys, is because right outside the body is money. So the first thing that's outside of you, of what everything that's going on within you is money. Then it's relationships, then it's business. And then it's all the other things about you. And then it's like mother earth and this big container holding you. And it just made me realize like, holy crap, there's all these people where I'm like, if you heal, this again comes back to when you do the inner work and you heal yourself and you find out who you really are, money will just come. Like you'll find something that feels aligned. You'll do what your life's purpose is. You'll be able to figure out what that is. And money is just a byproduct. It's just an exchange for your service of doing the thing that you're naturally good at. So it doesn't have to be this complicated thing. Like I know for me, I went to school because it was like, what kind of job can I get to make good money? Where you guys, deep underneath it all, before I ever did any of that, I've always been the mediator in everyone's relationships. I've always been the person both men and women come to to talk to about their relationships. That's a natural gift I have. I didn't even think about it. I went to school for bachelor's of science degree to go make good money. Like that's not even me at all, at all. But I went and did it because I was like, I'll make good money here. So like, forget all the things you're good at. You know what else I wanted to do? I loved personal training and nutrition. Loved it. Didn't think I could make good money unless I was a Hollywood celebrity, which now the level of belief I have within myself, I'm like, oh, no problem. Like I could totally go master that and go get some A-list celebrity clients and like go be a celebrity trainer if that's what I wanted to do. But I don't anymore. (laughs) But like I could do anything. Like I have that level of belief within myself, right? But I'm now, because I'm tapping back into me, I'm like, what are you naturally like, what you, what your soul's purpose is or what you're supposed to do in this life, you will naturally be good at. It's a natural gift within you that you've had your entire life. And this is another reason I want to build a school because I want to foster an environment for little kids to never lose touch of what their true gift is. I don't want to train it out of them. I don't want them to ever do anything that's misaligned with what their true purpose and gift is because everyone is different and has a different purpose here. But it's within you. It's been within you this whole time. It's just remembering it. And it's not some foreign thing. Like the thing that you don't even realize is a gift is probably your gift, you know? So anyways, being able to think about that. And what else? Uh, Oh, yeah. Another part that was just interesting was like the less connected you are to your heart, the harder life becomes. And that when you're connected to your heart, um, the easier life becomes and you would also wouldn't feel the need to be in power. And I love that because think of so many of the people that are in power that we see, they're disconnected from their heart. So many people that are CEOs, like they're hurt. Me chasing, like getting to the top level of the company that I'm with, like that was me 
like feeling like I needed to prove something where now I'm like, I'm there and my business is still growing, but it's not out of a place of power or need. It's just like a, just a thing that's happening from being in my heart and my own existence, right? Which means more money is coming and I'm not having to like fight or do anything. I'm just existing and being and doing the things that I'm good at. So anyways, um, if the inside of you is disconnected, doubtful, and insecure, and you don't have an, a connection to your heart or you're constantly chasing externally, um, you're always going to not feel fulfilled or happy and you're probably going to struggle with money. However, there's also people on the opposite side that are able to get a lot of money but are wildly disconnected from themselves, their heart, and who they are. So it's like starting to understand too that like out of a shielded and guarded place, you can go get a lot of money, but it's out of a wounded heart. So if your heart, soul, and mind are aligned and good, like you can also get a lot of money. So, okay. Anyways, um, just decide how much money you want to make, you guys. Pick a number. What feels good to you? Doesn't matter. Universe doesn't care. Put as many zeros behind it. But like for you right now, let's say you're making 75 grand. And you're like, you know what? Making 100 grand a year and having an extra $25,000 to go travel and like spend time with my family would be amazing. Okay, great. Choose that. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. Um, okay, that's it for the money thing. I think I mostly talked about it, but truly your business and the money situation you're in is a reflection of your heart and your soul. So just do the freaking healing work, you guys. Like dive in, go to Awaken, come to a women's circle that I'm hosting. Like we have them, we've been hosting them monthly. We're doing a retreat in February. Like there's so many things that you can tap into. Um, go do a breathwork session find a Reiki energy healer, like find different practitioners outside of just talk therapy and your entire world will change. And just know that when you truly go inward with you, money will become a byproduct when you think that you are a worthy, deserving human being. And then you go do something that feels purposeful and good to you. Like money will just come as a byproduct. And as you start to feel more worthy and earn more money, your, your mind will expand to hold space to create and earn more. Like who I am now and the space I have for what I have is like an energetic minimum around money is so much bigger than what it was when I first started my business. When I first started my business, I could only see that of like a normal salaried employee. It's like, oh my God, if I could make the same amount of money as like a normal salaried employee would a year, which for me back then, I think my job was going to give me like 75 or hundred grand a year, let's say. I was like, I've made it. Like if I can start a business that brings me in that amazing. And then when I earned that, it was easy for me to be like, okay, but what if I could make a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more? Um, and just creating the space to know that you're just, des- you deserve it all. You could have as much as you want. Um, again, just coming from a heart service place. Like the reason I want more right now, it's not for power. It's not to show off anything. It's not for materialism. It's not for any of that. The reason I want more is because I want a freaking farm and I want to open this school that is going to, like massively impact children. And what I see it as is so big. Like my vision for it is so big. It's going to impact children everywhere. Like I see it becoming this um, thing that once it's created, other people basically like buy the ability to almost like franchise it and start them everywhere around the world. Like that's what I see this becoming. And it's like, you need money and resources for that. And even that is limited thinking because I guarantee you I could find an investor if I start putting it out there to help invest in this, to get it started and then create this massive thing together. Of course it was three, 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 three when I said that. Um, but just knowing that like you, your vision will get bigger and you start to realize when you're living from your heart, life is easy. Money is easy. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complex. You don't have to be fighting and dealing with all that crap that comes with not having enough. Um, and honestly, me just saying not having enough makes me realize like when you realize you are enough, like enough starts to come to you in the form of abundance and money and all of that too. So I hope that was helpful. That's a little mini recap about the money part of it. Um, I will do another one about health next, but thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. I love you guys. Have the best day. And thank you so much for supporting the podcast. If you like this episode, you guys, you don't have no idea how massive and powerful it is when you share them, when you send them to people you know that it could help, when you um, comment or write a review, like all of those things are so crazy helpful. So thank you to all of you who share every single week and like post these. I appreciate it so much to get the word out and share these with other people. Um, Anyways, have the best day. I love you guys. Bye.